Hi, welcome back. Let's continue with our cloud journey. In the last episode, we had a tour of Windows Azure Management Portal, and we looked at the Instance page, which shows row instances of our cloud service. And we showed how you can connect to individual virtual machines by the connect link. Now let's take a closer look at the table. We can see there are two more columns here. Update domain and fault domain. What do they mean? The two terms represent the strategy adopted by Windows Azure for deploying and upgrading applications to provide fault tolerance and high availability. Now let's drill into each of them. Fault domain is a set of hardware components that share a single point of failure. For example, a computer that is plugged into a wall outlet is a fault domain. Because if the computer is unplugged, our hardware, monitor, CPU, hard drive, etc., will stop working. Similarly, in a data center, a rack of computers can be a fault domain if the computers share the same power source, a network connection, or cooling system. So to minimize the impact of possible hardware failures, Windows Azure deploys your instances to at least two or more fault domains, given you have more than one instances. Upgrade domain is to keep your application running during upgrade. In the last episode, we mentioned Windows Azure will take down your instance one by one and upgrade them in turn so that at any given moment, you have at least one running instance serving user requests. What actually happens is that instead of taking down instances one by one, Windows Azure takes down and upgrade instances by upgrade domains. This process is sometimes called an upgrade domain walk. By default, your instances are distributed into five upgrade domains but you can change the setting to up to 20 upgrade domains. You don't have control over fault domains. Windows Azure decides the best physical locations for your row instances. However, you can find out which fault domain an instance resides in. We can use our favorite row environment class to find out both fault domain and upgrade domain. And let's see how that works. I simply use the row environment class, current row instance, and then I can access the fault domain or update domain, which is the upgrade domain. Now we've made more changes to the service. We can use the same publish wizard to publish our updates to Windows Azure. However, this time let's dig a little deeper and see what exactly we are deploying to Windows Azure. So instead of publish, we only create the package to be deployed later. In this case, I will use the package menu. Click on package. You can see the package process creates two files, cspkg file and cscfg file. CSCFG file contains enough information for Windows Azure to provision necessary virtual machines. And the CSPKG file contains the actual bits to be deployed onto the virtual machines. CSCFG file is a standard XML file. CSCFG file contains information such as OS family, which maps to different operation systems. For instance, OS family equals 3 uh, refers to Windows Server 2012. And you can also see what are the roles in your cloud service and how many instances per role. And you can also see the configuration settings we've used in previous episodes. CSPKG file is a standard zip file. So you can actually open it. Of course, if you know the schema of CSCFG file, 
as well as the layout of CSPKG file, you can author a Windows address package outside the Visual Studio. And this is how some command line tools for other operation systems work. However, that is out of the scope of this series. The content of packaged CSCFG file comes from the CSCFG file in your solution. You can have multiple configuration files for different environments. For instance, by default, we have one configuration file for the cloud environment, and we have another configuration file for the local testing environment. You can create more configuration files if you like. In addition to the CSCFG files, you also have a CSDEF file in your cloud project. CSDEF contains mostly virtual machine level settings, including the endpoints of the roles and the modules your roles will need to execute. And remember we mentioned you can change the number of upgrade domains for your cloud service, and you can do this uh, in the CSDEF file. To do that, I will just insert a new attribute, which I got uh, IntelliSense from Visual Studio. I can change my upgrade domain count uh, to, let's say, 8 instead of the default uh, 5. And these are the definitions of CSDEF and CSCFG. You can read more on msdn.microsoft.com. But if you want some quick and easy way to remember which file is for what purpose, you can remember that the CSDF file is mostly for the virtual machine settings, and the CSCFG file is mostly for the topology of the deployment. This is not exactly accurate, but it helps you to remember roughly what each file contains. As you've seen, you can directly edit these two files if you want, but for common cases, you should use the graphic UI that Visual Studio provides you. If I double click on the row, I can go to its property page where I can edit various of settings. We've seen some of this in the previous episodes and your editing here will be reflected to the XML file. Now let's see how we can deploy these two files to Windows Azure. This time, Instead of using Visual Studio, we'll do it from the management portal. Now we are back at the portal. Notice that Windows Azure support multiple deployment environments. You get a production environment and a staging environment. Staging environment is useful because you can deploy updated bits to the staging environment before promoting it to production. So in this case, we will upload our package to the staging environment. I have switched to the staging environment. Then I will click Upload. I will give a name to the deployment. Let's say version 2 staging. And then I can browse to my local package files, or I can pick the file I uploaded to the Windows address storage before. Here I'm going to use the local file. I will navigate to the folder and pick the PKG file. And then I will do the same for the CSCFG file. Now the new version of the application is being deployed to the staging environment. Now our new version has been deployed to the staging environment. The staging environment is just like production environment. I have two virtual machines, and I got a separate URL for my service. I can go back to dashboard, and you can see for staging environment, I have a different URL I can navigate to. Let me try to use it. And you can see my staging environment is up and running and my new version is deployed to this environment. The staging environment runs in parallel with the production environment. I can navigate back to production environment anytime I want. 
let's say here I'm going back to uh, what's it called? Hashi says hello. And you can see my production environment is running an older version of my website. Let's say after some testing, we are satisfied with the staging environment and we want to promote it to the production environment. How do we do that? Actually, it's fairly easy. All I need to do is to click on the swap icon. Here, I'm going to do a VIP swap. VIP swap or the virtual IP swap means the virtual IPs assigned to production environment and the staging environment will be swapped. So staging becomes production and the production becomes staging where you can deploy new test space too and the process continues. Here I'm going to say yes. After swapping is done, I can go back to my page. Note that here I'm showing the old uh, version. And if I refresh my page, you can see the staging environment has taken over and now I got new versions to the production UIL. In this episode, we performed most operations on the management portal. Actually, what I mentioned are also available in the published wizard that we're familiar with. Let me bring up the wizard again. If I go back, you can see here in the wizard, I can actually select which environment I want to deploy to, production or staging. And the surface configuration, I can pick to use which configuration file I put in my project. In summary, today we examined two features Windows Azure uses to ensure high availability and fault tolerance of your cloud service. We looked at upgrade domain as well as fault domain. We also looked at the structure of the deployment package, which is a CSPKG file plus CSCFG file. We also talked about CSCFG file and CSDEI file. Then we talked about multiple deployment environments and how you can do virtual IP swap to promote staging environment to production environment. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.